Jennifer, you're here all the way from California. Welcome to Europe. Um, you've been looking at an extremely crucial topic uh, because you're looking at anti-PD-1 therapy, this yes. cutting edge therapy, yep. checkpoint inhibition and all that. But why have you been looking at PDL2 expression? Why is that so important? So that's that's a that's a that's an excellent starting question because um, PD one anti PD one so the PD one axis, which is the uh, particular biology that's being targeted with the anti PD one and anti PD L one agents. PD one the receptor on T cells, it's an inhibitory receptor on T cells, has two known binding partners: PD L one and PD L two. And currently, there has been extensive um, investigation of the distribution, the prevalence, the amount of PDL1 that's expressed in various human tumors, the types of uh, cells it's, it's expressed on. And there have been correlations that have been drawn with PDL1 to uh, clinical response. But to date, there has been almost no evaluation of PDL2, which, as a binding partner for PD1, is also able to suppress T cell activity. So if PDL2 is present in significant quantity in tumors and we're not looking for it, we are not necessarily picking out patients who are going to respond right. to, that, to the anti PD1 therapies. So, so doctors considering using yeah. PD1 yeah. need to be looking for biomarkers then? We, we all need to be looking for biomarkers. We want to predict who is going to be responding to these treatments. That's just, that's a very high priority. So what have you done in the study? Sure. So what we did, we started with uh, a, putting together sets of archival uh, tissues from seven different indications, uh, including renal cell carcinoma, melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, triple negative breast cancer, a, an array of tumors that are already being treated with anti-PD-1 inhibition in the, in the clinic to try to get a sense of what the relative prevalence of the PDL2 marker was in those tumors and whether that might play a role in uh, clinical response because it hasn't been investigated before. So we, first we did an initial screen through um, sets of tumors that it was about 70 samples per indication and then we expanded that to apply the um, findings that we had generated to test in a set of 144 uh, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma uh, carcinomas from patients that had actually been treated with pembrolizumab to see whether we could actually correlate the findings with clinical outcome. What did you find about the expression of PDL2 and its importance? So we were actually very surprised by the amount of PDL2 that we found expressed in tumors. Every tumor type that we looked at did show PDL2 expression. Um, it did vary in overall quantity by the indication, uh, but it was present in all of them. And it was present in uh, at least three different tumor types, excuse me, cell types. It was present in immune cell infiltrate and stromal cells. It was present on tumor cells. And in some uh, tumors, it was actually present in high quantity on endothelium, which may be especially relevant because T cells that are trafficking out of the blood vessels into the tumor tissue are going to encounter that on their way into the tumor. That's present and expressed. Yes, yes. And there's literature that uh, supports the ability of endothelial PDL2 to downregulate CD8 T cell activity and cytolytic uh, behavior. So, that um, process of engaging PDL2 as T cells cross into the tumor across the endothelial barrier could, in fact, basically downregulate their activity and their ability to kill the tumor in that very process of entering the tumor. Now, this is a very exciting stage, a very exciting form of therapy because extended survivals have been noted in a number of cancers using checkpoint inhibition. So what do you think doctors might get out of this in terms of clinical application? Yeah, so at this point, at this point, this is still very much early exploratory research and we need to expand our numbers. We need to uh, definitely be looking at larger cohorts of patients that have been treated to see if we do in fact, uh, to see if the initial findings that show some degree of significant predictivity of PDL2 uh, in patients, whether well, that, that bears out when we look at larger numbers of patients. But if in fact it does, then the implications very strongly are that in patients in whom PDL2 is present, a, a PD, an anti PD1 uh, targeted agent is much more likely to be efficacious than an anti PDL1 targeted agent simply because the anti PDL1 targeted agents aren't going to have any effect on the PDL2 that also can shut down the T cells. And can you target 
PDL1 and PDL2 separately by two different agents? That, that certainly could be done. Nobody's doing it at present. So it would entail the development of novel, uh, novel um, therapeutics for the PDL2 component. So what's the take home message for doctors at this point? So I, I think that the, the take home message is keep, keep your eyes peeled and we're going to have more data on this uh, coming because there's very active ongoing work to uh, evaluate whether the initial very exciting findings we've come up with are going to pan out in the long run. But right now it does look like we may have a molecule that has additional prognostic or predictive benefit for um, clinical response in patients. And the impact of that clinical response and in which cancers do you think? Oh, so this is data that we don't have yet. It, it certainly is the case that there are some tumor types where we seem to see more uh, PDL2 expression than in others, but uh, and there are some tumor types where we seem to see more uh, expression of PDL2 in the absence of PDL1, where uh, that that's something we are particularly interested in following out the relevance of. But at this point, it really remains to be seen. We need to see how how much uh, this is going to add to our ability to predict patient response. But it all points towards a more individualized therapy. It certainly points to needing to have a deeper understanding of what's going on in each individual patient's tumor. Yeah. Is it moving away from the particular tumor type and more towards the nature of the expression of different biomarkers? I would say that that is, that is very much the case. It's not so much the histology of the tumor, it's the particular expression patterns that are present in the tumor regardless of histology or cell type of origin. Jennifer, thank you very much. Certainly.